So, uh, first part of the uh, course is over. Uh, we had said that there will be multiple subsections. So, first subsection is over. We uh, are equipped with what we need to know about transmitters. Now, we move on to the next element in a fiber optic communication system, which is the channel. And the communication system has transmitter, channel, receiver, and then you make the link, right. So, uh, the channel we are not talking about uh, free space channel, we are talking only about fiber channel in this course. So, we are going to be talking about the properties of fiber. Channel properties simply become the properties of the fiber. And uh, what we are going to do in this module is mechanism of guidance, how does light get guided into a fiber, just revise how total internal reflection is helping you. Then uh, what is a loss attenuation in a fiber? what are these uh, modes of the fiber, then what are the channel impairments which will uh, other than attenuation, what other impairments do you have in the channel which is uh, dispersion and why do you have dispersion, what are the types of dispersion, what is the consequence of dispersion and uh, another kind of dispersion called as polarization mode dispersion which is very relevant because we are putting data in orthogonal polarizations. Now, like how we discussed last time. 100 gigabit standard is achieved by QPSK 25 gigabit modulation with two orthogonal polarizations, right. So, what happens to the two orthogonal polarizations as you propagate through the fiber and some nonlinear effects to the extent that we understand the system model. Nonlinear optics itself is a course by itself. So, we will just uh, look at those nonlinear effects which will affect a communication system. Okay. So, we start with the mechanism of uh, guidance and this is something that everybody is familiar with. In a, a typical optical fiber, you have a core, of course, the fiber is not of this short length, I mean it is just showing a section of the fiber. You have a core of refractive index N 1, you have a clad of refractive index N 2 and let us say the surrounding is air which is a refractive index N naught. And we know the mechanism of total internal reflection which will help uh, uh, the light getting trapped inside the fiber. We know that as you have an incident light which is falling at an angle theta i, there is a refraction at the air core boundary and let us say theta t is the transmitted light. And let us say this is the incident light which is actually 90 degree minus theta t and this if this 90 degree minus theta t is greater than the critical angle uh, between the core clad interface, then you will have all the light reflected back into the core and this continues to happen through the fiber and that is how light gets trapped inside the fiber. This is high school level understanding of uh, light guidance in a fiber. And of course, you have uh, learned how to calculate what is the uh, minimum angle of incidence so that there is guidance. So, what would be the critical angle at the uh, core cladding interface? Uh, critical angle theta c is sin inverse n 2 divided by n 1. This is from our basic Snell's law. So, we want this angle of incidence at this core cladding interface, let us call that as theta i prime, right. This theta i prime must be greater than the critical angle for light to be guided, which means theta t must be less than 90 minus theta c, right. 90 minus theta c. So, theta c is the uh, theta i is the largest angle that you should have. So, if you can find out for instance, let us calculate what is the critical angle for let us say the core is 1.5 and the cladding is also uh, air let us say, uh, what would be sin inverse n 2 by n 1? Let us calculate th uh, theta c 41.8 degrees, which means you can allow this angle theta i prime should be always greater than 41.8 degrees, which means theta t must be less than 
48.2 degrees. So, that theta c will become greater than 41.8 degrees. So, that you can have guidance. But as far as the launching angle is concerned, what is the relation between sin theta i and sin theta t? You know that n naught, uh, you not uh, n naught sin theta i is equal to n 1 sin theta t writing Snell's law at the uh, air core interface. So, for guidance for light to be guided you will still demand you know that sin theta i and sin theta t are now proportional. So, which means that my sin theta i must be less than n 1 by n 2 sin theta t which is n 1 by n 2 sin 90 minus theta c which is n 1 by n 2 cos theta c which is n 1 by n 2 square root of 1 minus sin square theta c which is n 1 by n 2 times root of 1 minus sin theta c is n 2 divided by n 1. So, you get this as under root uh, the square. So, you get this as n 1 square minus oh sorry this is not n 2 this should be n naught this should be n naught. So, this is n naught this is n naught n naught n naught divided by n naught. If n naught is if, if it is air n naught becomes 1. So, this gives you the uh, largest angle that you can uh, launch and that so the largest possible incident angle is given by uh, square root of n 1 square minus n 2 square divided by n naught. Okay. And this is also called as a numerical aperture of the fiber, the collection angle. So, any light that is coming within this cone can be guided into the fiber. Of course, this is all something that you have done in your high school, there is nothing new here. Okay. But this is our fundamental understanding of uh, how light gets guided into the fiber and what is the acceptance angle or uh, numerical aperture of the fiber. Acceptance angle of course, is this uh, theta, this is theta uh, acceptance angle, right? this is your theta accept acceptance angle. Theta acceptance is the largest possible incident angle such that the uh, light that is incident on the core cladding interface is guided. Now, how do they make fibers? Uh, if you are using uh, glass fiber, so in a commercial fiber which is laid long distance fiber that we typically use, uh, we use glass fiber. Okay, the patch cords that you see are all made of glass fibers, which means silica SiO2 is the material, the base material. To make the core, you have to increase the refractive index of silica by a certain number and to make the cladding, you have to decrease the refractive index of silica by a certain number. So, in the core region, you to increase the refractive index, these are the dopants, right? these are the additional materials that you add uh, by certain weight percent or a mole percent. Okay, by mole weight percent, a very small dopant is added so that effectively the refractive index of the uh, uh, doped silica is higher. If you, uh, it turns out that if you add germanium oxide, phosphorus pentoxide, the refractive index increases. If it turns out that if you add fluorine, boron trioxide, the refractive index decreases. So typically, you can make a fiber by taking silica. In the core region, dope it with one of these materials to increase the refractive index. In the clad region, you decrease the refractive index by this. But these days, what are called as you know pure fused silica is also available, where the core is just silica, there is no dopant. And later during the class, I will ask you why would that be preferred. But pure silica fibers are those where the core is just silica and only the doping is happening in the cladding to reduce the refractive index. Okay. So, this is how typically we are not going to the details of how a fiber is made and so on. Uh, so, this is for the glass fiber, 
Now, you could also have a plastic fiber, which is something that you used in your lab, a plastic optical fiber. Now, these plastic fibers are much easier to handle. You did not really worry about ferrules and connectors and so on. They are large numerical aperture, good light carrying capacity. Uh, they are usually made with polymethyl methacrylate, which is PMMA, it is a common polymer or prefluorinated polymer PF. So, it is either PF or PMMA, both are optically transparent, it has to be optically transparent and you can make the uh, optical fiber of it for it using it. For short distances, it is still uh, easier to handle polymer fibers. In reality, the core cladding difference is not as large as this the difference between the core index and the cladding index is going to be really, really very small. It will be in the third decimal place. Core will be 1.45 for instance and cladding will be 1.492 or something like that for instance. Anyway, so this is about the numerical aperture acceptance angle and so on.